गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन वेलकम टू ऑल इन दिस लेक्चर नंबर ट्वेंटी एट ऑफ मॉड्यूल फोर वे आर वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस पॉलिसीज एंड सिस्टम रिलेटेड टू प्रोडक्शन सो इन द लास्ट लेक्चर वी टॉक अबाउट वॉट टू प्रोड्यूस हाउ टू प्रोड्यूस एंड हाउ मच टू प्रोड्यूस वी स्टडीड इन डिटेल ऑल द थ्री पॉइंट्स so what to produce we studied that whatever is required for nurturing protection and right utilization of the body is to be produced and we studied that for this there is need to understand about the need and this need can be recognized on the basis of knowing of human being in the form of self and body coexistence of self and body then we talked about how to produce under this topic we studied about the four orders and we saw that the three orders are already in cyclic process and mutually enriching process so we have to produce keeping harmony of the rest of the nature in this process then we talked about how much to produce so how much to produce according to our need so according to our need related nurturing protection right utilization of the body for smooth functioning of the social system all this we talked about in previous lecture so in this lecture basically we are going to talk about about policies and system of production so if we see the first question is what is required to produce physical facility so production what requires number 1 healthy mindset so what does it mean healthy mindset means the capacity to identify need of physical facility so it is very important point when we are talking about production because if one is not clear about the real need of physical facility one is not able to identify the need of physical facility then one cannot decide how much production is required so for production work the first point is healthy mindset and how can we identify this need of physical facility we talked about this many times that to identify the correct need of physical facility there is a requirement to understand human being as a coexistence of self and body so once we have clarity about the self about the body and their coexistence then we are able to see that the need of self can be fulfilled through right understanding and need of the body through physical facilities then we talked about the feeling of self regulation with the feeling of self regulation in the self one can identify that physical facility is required for nurturing protection and right utilization of the body so with this knowledge of human being we can identify our need of physical facility so for production it is first important point that we should be able to identify our need of physical facility otherwise in the absence of this clarification about need the exploitation of nature will start that's why the first point is healthy mindset so with this clarification of the need of the self and body then the skill and practices for sustainable production of more than required leading to the feeling of prosperity so again it is an important point when we are going 
to make policies about production when we are going to design system related to production so this point should be ensured in each and every one that one is living with the feeling of prosperity with this one has skill and practices for sustainable production system so sustainable production means ensuring cyclic and mutually enriching process with clarity of need and feeling of prosperity keeping relationship in the center so this is sustainable production system so skill and practices are required for sustainable production not only production so once we have the feeling of prosperity once we know about sustainable production then we can impart skill and practices in each and every one so that one may produce according to need with the feeling of prosperity so a mindset of production not accumulation through labor this is again an important point a mindset of production is required through labor not through exploitation so once we are able to see relationship with others we have a mindset of production with feeling of relationship with feeling of prosperity so once we have feeling of prosperity we do not think of accumulating the physical facilities similarly when we are able to see the relationship with others we do not exploit the other peoples with this clarity a mindset of production is required then a mindset of right utilization not indulgence so when we are going to produce any physical facility it is important point to be noticed that do we have clarity about right utilization of produced physical facility if we are not rightly utilize if we are not going to rightly utilize the production then definitely we are going we are indulging in that production and it will start exploitation of the nature so second point is mindset of right utilization then third is mindset of protection so whatever physical facility we have we are with a mindset to right utilize those physical facilities and a mindset of protection of those physical those produced physical facilities not with the mindset of use and throw not with the mindset of indulgence not with the mindset of accumulation not with the mindset of exploitation so all these points are required to be ensured at the level of individual family society before starting production so we are studying about healthy mindset so healthy mindset include all these things so healthy mindset includes feeling of relationship it includes the clarity of need of physical facility it includes the clarity of sustainable production with right skills and practices it includes a mindset of production it includes a mindset of right utilization and mindsets of protection so if one ensures all these points it means he or she has healthy mindset with this healthy mindset there is a need of healthy body so once we have healthy mindset then there will be need of healthy body so with healthy mindset and healthy body we can do production so if we have healthy mindset but we do not have healthy body then it becomes difficult to ensure labor with rest of the nature so healthy mindset healthy body then skill right skills skills that ensure harmony while 
producing something then efforts and with rest of nature so all these things are required for production work so i hope you have understood all these points so with this mindset with healthy mindset with healthy body with right skills right efforts and interaction with rest of nature we are able to ensure production work according to one's need according to need of family according to society needs so with this clarity production becomes sustainable then another point is we have to identify how much how many professions are required how many occupations are required so that a society a village can sustain so we have to make a list we have to identify what kind of professions are required to run a society smoothly so for example in a society sea master is required a porter is required accountant is required oil pressure is required all these professions are required and etc so you may find out how many professions are required to run a smooth society smoothly how many doctors are required how many how many engineers are required how many professions are required so that a society can run smoothly so you can take pause here for minutes and explore to run a society how many professions are required so for example you are wearing a shirt you have a shirt on your body you cannot produce that shirt you cannot produce clothes you cannot produce that shirt so for this some professionals are required one that may ensure production of cloth second that may ensure the making of t-shirt from that production etc so in this manner we have to identify how many professions are required with this we can think of production then level of production so production at the level of family production at the level of village production at the level of group of villages so production are required at all these levels so let's study what production is required at all these levels so basic guideline if we talk about basic guideline of production before talking production at different level we can see in last lecture we discussed three types of protect production primary production secondary production and tertiary production and we studied that the priority order of these three types of production and we explored that primary is the most important that is related to nurturing of the body protection of the body after that secondary production and then tertiary production so we talked about their priority this concept in the last lecture so basic guidelines of what should be produced is number one primary production should be ensured at family and village level so primary production can be ensured easily at the family and village level so for example we need grains so like rice wheat whatever can be produced according to geography can be produced at the level of village and there are many things which can be produced at the level of family then secondary production should be ensured at the level of village and village clusters so those things that cannot be produced at the level of village can be produced at the level of village cluster and tertiary production should be ensured at the level of village
clusters or at larger level according to the need so if we follow this order most of the needs of a village of a family can be fulfilled with the feeling of relationship those need which cannot be fulfilled at the level of village are required to be produced at the level of village clusters so for example a school a school can be ensured at the level of village where family member can cooperate can help to get that school established when there are some special professions which are required to be skilled like doctor medical colleges so that medical colleges cannot be built at the level of each village so one or two according to need medical college yes can be built at the level of village clusters so in this manner we have to identify it what needs can be fulfilled at the level of family what needs can be fulfilled at the level of village and what is required to be produced at the level of village clusters so again you can take pause for 2 minutes and make a list what production can be done at the level of family what production can be done at the level of village and what production can be done at the level of village clusters so it will vary according to geographical location environment soil condition etc etc so essence of the above guideline is that any primary production should be taken up as lower level as possible and if you go through this most of the production can be held at the level of family and village in this manner there will be less burden on village clusters so these are few basic guidelines which has to be followed for sustainable production and when production held at the level of family at the level of village it also solve the problem of unemployment so these are few basic guidelines which we have discussed related to production process so let's see what is to be done at the level of family at the level of village at the level of village clusters etc so at the level of family we can produce physical facilities that are actually required to run a family in a smooth manner then at the level of village then at the level of village cluster or society in this manner we can extend the things so production services or repair repair maintenance all this should be done for the facilities which are necessary if somehow we are involved in unnecessary production it becomes wastage of resources and very soon it becomes burden on the whole ecosystem so main point is we should produce only the things which are required according to real needs and this real needs can be identified with the knowledge of human being with the knowledge of coexistence of self and body so identification of our need is very much necessary before production otherwise knowing unknowingly we will be harming the nature so if one is not clear about the real need the exploitation of nature cannot be stopped so before talking about production we should be aware about actual need actual need of individual actual need of the family members then we can make a list of all physical facilities required to run a village identify the physical facilities which can be produced in the village and which this identification we need need to produce in excess so that they can be used in exchange for the material which cannot be produced in the village so suppose there are three village four village in a village cluster so things x will be produced in village 1 things 2 will be produced in village 2 
and exchange can happen between these villages in a village cluster. So, in combination of all these, decide what are the facilities village has to produce and in what quantity. So, you can do this exercise for yourself. You can identify what is the need, your individual need, family need, need at the level of village. Then you can make a list what needs can be fulfilled by the production processes at the level of village. And then there should be proper distribution of all the resources required for production. For example, land, forest, river, etc. Then who will who will produce uh, produce what can be decided by common meeting. So first important point is to identify the need. Then who will produce is the next part which can by which can be decided with a common consent at the level of village. So a proper need and resources based planning is required rather than money based lifestyle. Production related to food, shelter and clothes that is primary production should be ensured at the level of village. So a design of village should be in a manner that most of the primary production can be ensured at the level of village. Then to fulfill those needs, to fulfill those production, tools and machines are required. This comes under the secondary production. Then the machines which we are not able to manufacture at the level of village, their repair and maintenance must be assured, ensured in the village or at the level of village cluster. After this exchange can be done only after ensuring the fulfillment of this need of the village. So you can see before talking about skill, before talking about this production process, there is a need to recognize the real need at the level of individual family, at the level of village, village clusters. Then only we can talk about this production. Now we can discuss what ben are benefits of production at the level of village. So number one, every family will have the assurance of necessary physical facilities. So when we produce at the level of village, so first benefit is every family will have the assurance that they will get enough physical facility. So it somehow it creates social security. Because of this local production, better quality of product is ensured. So when the production is done locally, everyone observe it. So its quality is ensured automatically. And next is when a production is done at the level of village, minimum transport is required. So no transportation cost is included in the production if we do production locally. And it also ensures quality because it is being produced in front of every member of the village. Then it also ensures availability of all types of required work. So when production process starts, the availability of type of required work gets very clear. And it also ensures maximum utilization of resources. Another benefit is maximum possible use of mineral and resources in its naturally available form. So when we produce locally, so we use local resources and we also take care of those local resources. So when we do local production, all these benefits can be seen easily. And it becomes very easy to study the impacts of any process of production in rest of the merchants. Because when we do local production, production at the level of village, actually we are taking care of the rest of the environment because we are getting resources from that environment. So in this manner, we, are, we become aware about the impacts of our actions on the rest of the nature. Another important point is 
when we do production locally it becomes self reliance and less dependency on exchanges and an assurance of opportunity for production and availability of required resources to carry it out for everyone so less dependency on current market system so when things are produced locally we can see all these benefits at the level of village then you can this do this exercise at your home design a product system at for your own village level identify the needs identify your natural resources identify the materials which are required identify professions how many professions are required for that production system on the basis of you can do calculations decide how many people need to engage in what particular production finally distribute the responsibilities of production among villagers so all this exercise you can do at your home so in this manner you will be knowing the importance of this production process and of course before designing this production process are you aware about the need of the body with this context you can do this exercise so if you see at the level of village cluster a major part of necessary facilities will be produced at the level of village itself so if you ensure production process at the level of family at the level of village so most of the requirements most of the need can be fulfilled at the level of village itself but few needs are required to be produced at the level of village clusters so there will be some necessary primary productions which one village might not be able to produce due to environment due to geographical geographical area so some production will not be required to be done in every village so whatever is not produced in the village will be taken up by village clusters so in this manner village cluster comes into this role so family village village clusters are used to produce the need <coughs> so finally it can be decided that which village will take care of which product all this exercise has to be done at the level of village so you can take pause for 2 minutes you can observe you can investigate whether all these things are required or not if we ensure all these things it will ensure sustainable production or not then we can talk about society and policy level so for sustainable production every person should get the opportunity to produce so if every person get the opportunity to produce he start he or she starts labor then should get the necessary natural resources for that production so one is the opportunity for the production and second one is the they should get enough natural resources for that production and this necessary skills should be developed through education and sanskar next is to promote and create the mentality to produce the necessary facility and reduce the production of unnecessary one and for this again there is a need of clarity of the body so with the clarity of with the knowledge of this human being it can be ensured and with this there is a need to cultivate the mentality of need based production instead of profit based production if you see that today's scenario in the society most of the production are profit based they are not need based so with the right understanding with the knowledge of human being our production becomes need based and with this there is a requirement to respect the labor to create the mentality of labor so what a person will produce will be decided on the basis of need of the facility 
and this need can be identified with the knowing of the coexistence of self and body. So if you follow all these at policy level, if we ensure all these at society level, then our production process becomes sustainable. Then we can talk about which production should happen at which level. So as we talked about primary, secondary and tertiary. So for a self-sufficiency in the context of this physical facility, we can identify productions according to primary, secondary and tertiary. So there is a need from a small to medium industry, so small at the level of village, small at the level of family, then medium at the level of village clusters, etc. Then there, then there will also be need of heavy industries, transport vehicle, telecommunication that can be produced at the level of village clusters. Then definitely for communications, for transportation, there will be required big transportation, big vehicles like train. So all this can be ensured through at the level of village clusters. So with this, in this manner, we can have a sustainable production system. So in this lecture, we talked about the policies of production processes. We talked about how sustainable development can be achieved through a collective efforts of family, society, village, at village clusters. Sustainable production can happen with the feeling of relationship, with the feeling of prosperity, with the clarity of real needs of human being and with the understanding of the natural characteristic of rest of the nature. So if we ensure all this mentality in education and SCAR, then our production system becomes natural. So that's all from my side. Thank you very much. So let's meet in the next lecture. Have a good day. Thank you.